lights for me. Lights, action, camera. Here goes the introduction of the Dr. Shaker. <laughs> okay, so uh, Dr. Shaker is a BMS, MD, Ayurveda. He's also done his LMT. He's from Pennsylvania, USA, and has been practicing and teaching Ayurveda worldwide since 1988. He began his eight-year course of study in Ayurveda at the age of 17. Can you believe it? First at Nagarjuna University in Andhra Pradesh, India, and then at Gujarat Ayurveda University in Gujarat, when he earned his doctorate degree in Ayurveda. He is also a licensed integrative body work in massage therapist and an experienced registered yoga teacher with yoga alliance and instructor of therapeutic Hatha Yoga, having completed training at Swami Vivekananda Yoga Research Center in India. Shekhar is also a certified, completed, trained uh, pranic healer, a certified Reiki healer, and holds a certification in energy healing. And from 1992 to 1994, Dr. Shekhar worked as an associate professor at NKJ. Ayurvedic College, Gulbarga University, Peter, Karnataka State, India. Shekhar had the opportunity to serve at Maharshi Vedic schools and universities in the Netherlands, Austria, Hungary, Italy, Germany, France, Switzerland, Great Britain, Ireland, Portugal, Spain, Belgium, Trinidad, Jamaica, Colombia, uh, Canada, and the USA. <laughs> That's pretty long. During his uh, extensive travels, he delivered lectures and offered consultations of Ayurveda for health professionals for the general public. He gave several newspaper interviews and radio talks on Ayurveda and was also interviewed on BBC's Breakfast Television. Since 2002, Shekhar has been the founding director of OGIS Ayurveda Wellness Center in Pennsylvania, USA. He is the founder, president, and chairman of the Board of Association of Ayurvedic Professionals of North America, APNA. He is the founding director of Global Ayurveda Conferences USA. Shekhar is a co-founding director of International University of Yoga and Ayurveda. And Dr. Shekhar served on the board of directors for National Ayurvedic Medical Association, NAMA, from 2005-2010. He has taught Ayurveda courses in many prestigious universities in the United States, including University of Pennsylvania, University of Medicine and Dentistry in New Jersey, Hershey Medical School, Jefferson Medical School, University of Penn Nursing School, and others. He was awarded the Tathagat International Excellence Award in 2011 in Dubai, received an award, Ayurveda Pandasara Stapanacharya Award for promoting Ayurveda around the globe. Pravati Award for promoting community service. He received Vishwa Ayurveda Ratna, which means Gem of Ayurveda and Global Ambassador of Ayurveda from Bharat Seva Sansthan, Lucknow, India. And he is also a recipient of Dhanvantri Award and Bharat Vaj Award from various organizations. He is on the editorial board for Ayurveda Health Journal and was appointed as a board of advisor for AIU International Journal from Gujarat Ayurveda University Journal. And that's a very little about Dr. Shekhar. I'm sure there's a lot more. Um, may I invite Dr. Shekhar? Dr. Shekhar? Dr. Shekhar? Let's put our hands together for Dr.
but I have an ingrained information I want to have from presentation. I would like to bring some insights of the dentistry, in the modern dentistry. In Ayurveda, as I mentioned earlier, our teachers also explained that uh, this is the last treasury of knowledge, dentistry in Ayurveda, which is called in Ayurveda called Danta Shastra. Danta Shastra. This dentistry has not well practiced in the modern system. Ayurvedic dentistry is not practiced well. Because this may be lost the knowledge during the period of war, different colonialism is happened in India, where the treasures of knowledge are lost. Even the university in the Takshashila, Nalanda universities were the last of knowledge. But fortunately or unfortunately, this knowledge is available in Gujarat, in Rajkot. They started a dental college, Ayurvedic Dental College. There, without anesthesia, they pull the teeth. Without the anesthesia, they pull the teeth. This is the technology they used, which has migrated to Thailand, like Thai yoga. But they used called bandhas. But in Ayurveda, yoga philosophy, Jalandara bandha. There is a special bandha, Jalandara bandha, which is in the neck area. They block the nerve system, nervous system temporarily and after that they can pull the teeth. The pulling teeth is the, when it's a loose teeth, the tooth are loose, they are ready to fall or some caries tooth and so many teeth problems are there, they pull the teeth. That's the one technology they use it. And interestingly that when you pull the teeth, no blood. Because the nervous system has blocked there, then you don't see the blood is not coming out. And very simply they do it, after that they make you to drink some uh, turmeric and cold water. Turmeric is an antiseptic and vitamin K is there, hemostatic quality. That's the reason turmeric is used very frequently. That is the reason traditionally in Indian culture, women, any cuts are happening or in the family, they use turmeric as an antiseptic. Now, the turmeric is widely used around the globe. Yellow powder, which we call yellow powder turmeric. Turmeric is a Kukuma Landa, Jinjibari's family. That's very widely used in the Vedic cultures in Ayurveda. Now, if you look at the, the origin of Ayurveda and dentistry, Brahma, the inception of knowledge of Ayurveda came from Brahma to the Daksha Prajapati and from there Ashwini Kumaras. From the Indra, from Indra, the Nimi expert of surgery of the mouth, throat and nose, ears, eyes, head, that is called Shalakya Tantra, also Nimi Tantra. So Indra has uh, given this knowledge to the particular teacher, like uh, we have uh, schools, like uh, Harvard students are there, and uh, Stanford students are there, Yale University students are there. Similar way, this in different schools are teaching different ways of the approaches. That's the reason the graduates from the different universities, they are graduating from the different, different expertise are there. So that is the reason that James mentioned that uh, my Ayurveda is different from your Ayurveda. So, from there, Dhanvantari, from there here it came different students, Sushruta, Aupadhenava, Vaitarina, Auravra, Pushkara, Pushkalavata, Karaviriya, Gopura Rakshita, Bhoja, these are the different scholars. That means what happened, these textbooks, which are mentioned, Aupadhyanava Samhita, which is not available. We lost it. There are different textbooks. What we have available, only limited sources of books are available. The entire 
that encyclopedia of Ayurveda is not available. We lost it. That is the reason the government of India is trying to acquire different knowledges which are available in the families, traditional families, in the underground. Sometimes they kept in the underground these books, these are the palm leaves, the knowledge is there. That knowledge are bringing back and now you can see that a lot of palm leaf knowledge. When I was studying medicine also, at that time, when I was a neighbor, when I started studying Ayurveda, he bought some palm leaves to me. I could not understand what is written on palm leaves. Then I went to the Central Council of Indian Medicine, CCIM, branch is there, the CCRIS, the research institute, I gave it to them. So please review these books and everything, what the palm leaves are reading, reading like that. So that's the thing happened to us. <coughs> now let us go to this dentistry. The teeth in Ayurveda called them danta or ruchaka. Ruchi. Ruchi means taste. So through the mouth we are feeling the taste, the perception and com completing satisfaction and everything. So here Dantana Asyana Upadhatu. So Karsham Sanghita, they clearly mentioned that huh? Danta is, Danta means the teeth are the sub tissues of bones. The persons who are having strong bones, they have strong teeth. Make sense? So bones are the byproducts of the Asthidhatu, that the bone tissue. So, Ruchaka means imparts the taste and also bones means, uh, Asti means bones. There are 32 permanent teeth and 24 primary deciduous teeth. Now, children last four deciduous teeth leads to them only 20 teeth. They have 20 teeth. So, this is the classification of them. In the ancient textbooks, Raja, Raja Danta, Central Incendars, Later Incendars, Canines, Malars, this different term. Uh, different sizes, different conditions like that. That is the reason we have different teeth structure is there. So now question comes here. Dogs, animals and human beings. Dogs having prominent canine tooth is there. Canines. All the animals like a tiger. These are the animals having strong prominent teeth are there. As you are using like a muscle builder. Their biceps and the triceps are strong. Runners, they have gastro muscles are stronger. Make sense? Similar way, when you are using certain types of muscles and bones and everything, our systems also adopted like that in evolution here. As we are seeing now, lot of people they cannot digest the food. The reason is that this is the problem. We have a sedentary lifestyle. We are white color job holders. When we are sitting there morning to evening, our digestive system is starting to slow down. And we used to walk. Once we started walking like a, that is the reason we also tell that the kids, pediatricians may know that if the children, they crawl, they have more memory. They have digestive problems are less. As soon as they started to stand up, there is digestion sluggish. Because when they are stand, crawling, their intestines become strong, longer. The digestive process is easier. When they stand up, the intestines are congested. Now 30 feet long intestines are impacted or packed into the small stomach area, from this area. So now you have to be meticulously, carefully, very carefully you have to eat food. And particularly, it's interesting that digestion starts from the mouth. Ayurveda strongly believes that digestive system starts from the mouth. A lot of people think that, oh, my stomach is upset. Your not stomach is upset because you are talking too much while you are eating. The stomach is upset because, not because of weak digestion, you are not properly chewing well. I remember 
my grandfather used to eat alone and is a physician and when he is eating nobody should not disturb him he will sit quietly in a meditative pose and sit and eat if anybody comes a patient comes and he he has to go there message will be message generally not will really convey to him until he finishes his meals because even the any bad news if conveyed through the food even though you are eating organic food that emotions also digest in the process makes sense the happy cook makes happy food unhappy cook even though he is cooking with organic organic food it becomes poison makes sense so these are the concepts of last year and that's the reason we are in this such a situation now when we are walking we are eating when we are talking we are eating when you are laughing you are eating when you are upset you eat when you are happy you eat when you are sad you eat so that means what happening food is a comfort food becomes a comfort and we are not properly chewing well the processing of the digestion so baby tooth i don't know tooth if you see look at this what are that so that's the reason we give very gentle foods easily digestible for the kids as the grown up more tooth are developed then digestion is more stronger so what is the healthy tooth uh, dr shekhar can we see the adult side again just quickly it's available source is available there rush educational centers and other places okay. there so these are the things normal healthy tooth strong white in color dense smooth clean slightly prominent well developed evenly placed in relation to each other so this is all the healthy tooth qualities healthy gums also mentioned danta mansa danta mansa means sir the danta vesta danta mansa even pink smooth strong dense and steady so here generally when you wanted to maintain good healthy digestion and assimilation try to avoid as much as flower foods flower things that's the reason even chapati biscuits cookies all the flower makes sense if you eat a whole grains you process it and digest it complex carbohydrates when you eat process it so think about that already flour bread and sprouted bread you eat the quality of the digestion and everything is different and the quantity also you eat less if it is powdered more powdered then you eat more because you are never satisfied and it is a simple carbohydrates converted into simple carbohydrates and when you have a complex carbohydrates it's a longer time to digest them in that we use spices and condiments and everything and these are the simple tips for that how after eating of the food gargling is one of the important thing now it is a new fashion for the people to use the oil pulling oil pulling in the western world it's came in the ancient time it is there kavala and gandusha these are the two things are explained a special chapter completely explain how to use different oils decoctions so now if you look into that now if you see the palm leaf middle nut middle leaf you may be experience the bitter leaf 
Bitter leaf is a palm used in the bitter and astringent taste. Rich in calcium. Rich in calcium. So, if you chew after the meal, two, three leaves, your digestion improves, your assimilation also improves, mouth freshener strengthens the gums and teeth. Now question comes, how we can get it in the Western world? So there are similar type of things are also available, like a tea tree oil, pilu, these are the herbs are commonly available, even the things with the mint, spearmint. Spearmint are basil leaves after the meal, if you chew them, you can enhance the digestion and assimilation Spearmint, mint leaves, peppermint leaves. Even some areas people they use rosemary in the Italians, they use rosemary, tarragon, marjoram. Those herbs also can be chewable. If you look into the taste wise, they are very, very similar, like a bitter and astringent taste. These taste of the Helps if you take it. Huh? It's a nice mouth freshener and also the bacterial load will be low when you are chewing this. Huh? This helps. Use of the herbs for the brushing teeth. Nowadays you can see it's easy Colgate and there are Pamaleo and now you can see the lot of things people they use also because the reason is that the frothing, frothing is coming that feels the satisfaction. But there you can make it also your own herbal powders, herbal paste. Nowadays you can get neem, babul, different types of herbs are prepared with that. Tulsi, Tulsi toothpaste is available. Spearmint toothpaste is available. Pilu. Another variety of the pills. Any herbal, if you put an herbal uh, toothpaste, those are good to use it. So how to use them? Generally, twice daily, using the teeth to strengthen the gums and teeth. So morning and evening. So ideally to do it morning and evening, if possible, if you are able to do it every meal, each, each and every meal, if you are able to do it, you can do it. Otherwise, just simply Gargling with the warm water, gargling with the warm water each, after each meal, if you gargle with the warm water, that clear the, any tooth part, the food particles are stuck with your teeth and gums, it will be cleared. Now, tooth flossing, the flossing is also technology is there available, that technology was used there in the ancient time. Nowadays, in European cultures, they use charcoal. Charcoal also very good antibacterial. Charcoal is uh, full of calcium. So, you remember that in the, in the villages, people they go, they put a fire. In that fire, after burning, they put a charcoal piece and they put it in the mouth and they chew it. So now if you burn the house, this thing in America, you will burn the house, don't do it. <laughs> so, so these are the charcoal tablets are available, charcoal leaves are available and now I will give you, before you leave, I will give you a simple herbal powder you can make it. For example, take turmeric, turmeric one part, clove, Clove powder, lemon that is called, one eighth part, licorice powder, two parts, neem, neem, neem powder, one part. Bala, Bala, 
strengthening the gum sandhi bala one part and tulsi 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 tulasi t u l a s i tulsi aspam santam holy basil holy basil and one part One eighth teaspoon of baking powder. One eighth teaspoon of baking powder. One eighth part. What is the name of the herb? Tulsi. After Tulsi. Bala. Bala. B A L A. Bala. Sida cardifolia. Sida cardifolia. Bala. And this is the combination of powder. You can mix it. Take this powder and uh, slowly with the rubbing, you will also feel that. Um, think about that. After brushing your teeth with toothbrush, and take this powder, apply in the gums with finger, and gently massage the gums. You are strengthening the gums and teeth. So this is a very simple thing. Even if you are not able to find this, all the ingredients, what you can do, there are simple things can be done by using a bomb in your home. Turmeric, turmeric is available. You can take a turmeric, mix with aloe vera juice, mix with aloe vera juice. And uh, a small cup of water, just swishing, mouth swish. You can do mouth swishing. It really helps a lot to strengthen the gums and teeth. Antibacterial quality is there. So simple things: turmeric and aloe vera juice. Aloe vera juice is available without having a need to simple whole leaf aloe vera juice available. Really, these are so many companies are available. So just collect it, put in a turmeric powder, mix them, and gargle. So basically, this will helps you people who are having gingivitis, halitosis, mouth friend, mouth freshener like that. Are bad mouth, bad breath, and people who are having you know, issues with the uh, dental problems. Another interesting thing that now you see mercury amalgams are there in the mouth. It filled with the mercury amalgam. Mercury amalgam. Once upon a time, when the mercury was amalgam was uh, used, of course, I made also used uh, mercury. As a therapeutic and medicinal usage, the mercury was invented and used as a mineral in the Western medicine also in the vaccines to dental care because it's a heavy metal. This heavy metal can hold a lot of problems in the dental caries to dental problems. So this mercury amalgam are filled. Now holistic dentistry, modern holistic dentistry. First, what they do for putting the de dental amalgam, they charge you to take it out. They will charge you again. Both ways. So for this, there is the studies are done. This. Mercury amalgams. Then the debatable subject is there. Mercury amalgams. They leach after some time. They leach the vapors, and those uh, poisonous vapors can create a cancer in the mouth. And sometimes you may have problems with neurological problems, such as Bell's palsy. Such as paralysis, strokes, the high levels of lead and mercury in the body system, even the chronic degenerative diseases also. 
So you have to be careful, check with your dentistry doctor, dental doctor, who can help you to, if possible nowadays, the non-mercurial fillings are available, options are available, those they are using. Like, lot of pediatricians nowadays, they mention that uh, in our vaccines, we do not have any mercury. There's a big board, sign board is there. So that means what happening, once upon a time it is given, it's not a fault of the one system of medicine. Research, when the research is going on, they see the more and more side effects of the medications are happening. Once upon a time, when we were studying medicine in the 1980s, the shelf of the medicines which are there, after 20-30 years later, three decades, those medicines taken out. New medicines are entering into the shelves. So this is the thing is very important that one has to think about that how Ayurveda can help in this direction of home. This is the dental care, this thing. Now you got a wonderful recipe to take care about your mouth. And the other thing is that as an Ayurvedic practitioners, even nowadays you can see that any mouth gargling substance, particularly alcohol free substances, list them. If you see the ingredients of alcohol is there, do not use it. Because what happens alcohol? It dries up your gums. So now, there is this company, dental company, they started in a dental herb company. And I use in my practice also mouthwashes, mouth strength like that purposes. Now they are using go to cola, brahmi, is having a very good capillary permeability and strength to the gums. So, that gum strengthening, Brahmi or Kotukola is very good for strengthening the gums. Licorice or Glycerinthia glabra. This is also ST Madhu which is used for strengthening the gums and teeth. So these are the very important things which can in day to day practice you can use it. And also gargling with them, the debate, debate question here, gargling, you can use various types of gargling oils. So generally, the scientific study has shown that the sesame oil is considered the best oil. Sesame oil, if you look into that, sesame oil having a linoleic acid, Vitamins C and D are high in quantity. Vitamin D is high. It is also Musna Virya means uh, it is a penetrating nature. And gums and teeth will be strengthened very well by using a simple sesame oil. But not cold pressed organic sesame oil can be used. If you want to have flavor, you can use in peppermint oil or lavender oil and uh, different oils, edible oils can be used, a few drops. So gargling with sesame oil and after that make sure that you use your finger to gently massage your gums and teeth. That's very important, just only gargling is not sufficient, just gently touch your gums and teeth to strengthen the gums and teeth, that's very important. So, these are the simple steps if you do it, you see the difference, there is a lot of studies are there. I will show you, take you to the... Dr. Shekhar, what is the name of the company for the mouthwash? Dental Herb Company. Dental Herb Company, you can google it. Dental Herb Company. Dental Herb Company. So, they have different various... Toothpaste are available, tooth sprays are also available. There are so many things they use herbals as a natural way to use it. So, a little bit expensive, but you can make your own formulations like that. That will be easier 
to do it to mouth gargling and dental care. But bottom line is here, our goal is to strengthen the gums and teeth. Why? If you lost your gums and teeth, what happened? Your digestive process is weakened. And a lot of people, they have beautiful teeth, but they don't chew well. But the digestive problem, the teeth are not for showing. Is it? Teeth are not for beautification. Teeth are for meant for digestion, metabolism, assimilation, absorption, and breakdown of the parts. The people, I have observed, people, those who eat fast, like a, what we call as a shoveling of the food into the mouth, shoveling, like a shovel, like a snow shovel. They snow, like a snow shovel, they shovel in the food, they don't digest it, they don't process it, they are more prone to diabetes. So I have observed people who are eating fast eaters, there's a chance of getting up diabetes easy. So to slow down, because modern science evidence-based system has proven that that TLN enzyme, which is in the mouth, it's not in the stomach. Gastrin, pepsin, amylase, all the enzymes are in the down. But the TLN enzyme, which is responsible for the carbohydrate breakdown. So majority of the foods, what you are eating in the mouth, you have to chew well. And there is a fanatic, people are fanatic like that, yoga teachers and other people, oh you have to use 32 times chewing. So that's not important. That's what you need to do, focus on how you are able to digest and process it. So thank you very much. There's a lot of information we can talk about that. Thank you for giving the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Do we have to have that wisdom tooth or is that? We have questions. Yeah, 
So our topic for uh, today is um, allergies, which is um, a very common problem in our families and society. Being a pharmacist, you know, that is something uh, I had to see a lot of this um, as a clinical situation as well as an over-the-counter situation. And, um, being the conference being on um, home remedies, um, so we're trying to look at in a more holistic approach, like how we can consider both clinical side as well as um, uh, in general, what we can do at home and um, how to understand the actual problem of allergies, how to look at it. Um, not only in a, a medi medical point of view, but as a, a general life situation. Okay. How many, I mean, how many of you had a situation of allergies? No allergies. Allergies? <laughs> yeah. Family members. Yeah. Family members. Okay. So I mean, most of the time, I mean, in general, you know, everybody faces that in, in a minor way or in a larger way, uh, in a critical situation or a simple uh, situation, right? It be a skin reaction or um, asthmatic or uh, sneezing or uh, some kind of response, body response. Uh, generally, what is allergy defined as is a hypersensitivity reaction initiated by immunological mechanisms. Okay. Hypersensitivity reaction initiated by immunological mechanisms. Okay. In general, I mean, this is for medical people or professional people that may be uh, understandable, but in common public, it, it's not so much of comprehension. All this is, there is a problem. <laughs> there is a reaction or there is a response. What do I do? Okay. I will go in a few of those, those slides. The types of allergies generally we see is commonly what is uh, seen is the rhinitis or rhinitis. Okay. Anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is more in a situation of uh, uh, full-blown reaction where it can be fatal. So the only solution for that is emergency or uh, epinephrine injection. Okay. And uh, the other kind is drug allergies, what we call ADRs, adverse drug reactions. And people are like, you know, sulfur, allergic to sulfur, or you know. Any class of specific drugs. Okay. And the other kind is sinusitis or asthmatic. And another group is food allergies. That has become pretty common these days. But that was not the case like what 15, 20 years ago. Um, recently, it has uh, become very common. I mean, you will see the what you call uh, label. I mean, on the label, everywhere it says like, oh, you know, this is made. This product is made on. The same chemicals as peanuts or you know, other things. 15 years ago, 20 years ago, we were not seeing that. But um, it has become so important, it has become common. <coughs> and then skin reaction, skin allergies, dermatological situations. So these are the, the types of allergies. And why do we get that? I mean, what triggers them? Because we, uh, we we find it as initiated by immunological mechanisms. What so it triggers? Why the immunological response gets triggered is because of commonly it's seen as pollen. Generally, you know, pollen is blamed for that. So that refers to more of seasonal or the flowering or blossoming situation. And dust, dust is pretty much everywhere. But the question comes: What kind of dust? We are not the allergies to you know, sand or um, soil, right? Dust, when you refer to them, there is a game where you see what which dust or what kind of dust. Foods. Foods again, what foods? 
most of the time there is uh, a misunderstanding about food when you say packaged food or natural food or uh, chemically chemical fertilizer used foods or organic grown foods. You know, there's a broad range of situations. So when, when we commonly say foods, you know, it may not be the right term. It's sometimes it can be misguided. Uh, medications. It can be adverse drug reaction or as well as uh, a chemical based response system that the body cannot and is not adopting to because it's a foreign, it is seen as a foreign material. And mold, a lot of the homes in the western zone are air conditioned. Anyway, it doesn't matter whether it's office or home. You know, they're all uh, closed environments. And mold is a definite derivative of that. Open environment will not cause mold growth. So any corners where there is energy block or no flow, no movement, no freshness, mold loves it. That's the home to it. And then animal and pets. In general, in the eastern countries, you don't see pets in the house. No dog, cats inside the house. Their, their place is outside the door. But here we have it in the toilet, but on the bed, kitchen, it doesn't matter. Where you cannot reach, but they can reach. Okay. So animals and pets take you know, a good place in our environment, and uh, unfortunately, you know, they cause some, uh, they trigger the allergic reactions. Not necessarily, I mean, a lot of times generally we say dander or you know, hay, but that's a natural substance. It doesn't have to be uh, triggered. But there are, there's a lot of other stuff. It can be a scrotum, it can be, you know, stools, it can be urine, it can be chemicals we use to wash it. Now there is so much comes with um, the pet. Okay. So pet itself is not the problem, pet's hair is not the actual problem, but you know there's a lot of other things which we don't probably pay attention to. And the insect stench, um, cannot avoid it, but you know, um, the only solution is to uh, use either an napkin or other topical um, substances. And the latex, latex is another Thing. Um, not everyone is allergic to it, but whoever is allergic to it, you know, uh, it's a, it's a kind of gets pretty good. So the good thing is that if you know there is one substance, then obviously you can uh, prevent it. You can avoid it. So when we look at it, that um, there is a problem. So how do we solve it? You know, when we try to understand it. Um, we have given the reason in, in, in the explanation when it is defined as okay, what is the allergy reaction or the allergy situation, you know, why we are here. So it is defined generally as false alarm. Okay. Or as overreaction of our immunity system. Okay. And or it's a misident misidentified, like when substance, what it is saying is when something comes into you, right? It's like invasion, something is invading you, so your immunity is trying to fight it, right? But it, it's, is it identifying it as a foreign substance or harmful substance? Is it a false alarm really? Or is it a overreaction of the immune system? Or is it not identifying it right? Okay, so somebody is entering into, into your home, so you just suddenly stayed or you're coming with a gun, so not knowing that that's your friend coming into you. you know, so you mis misidentified as harmful to you. <coughs> or is it an immunity malfunction? Okay. So I have, I mean, this is accepted definition, accepted formula in our uh, modern system. Right? Do you all agree to that? Makes sense? Mm -hmm. But I kind of question that. I have my doubts. Is it really false alarm? Because we survive, you know, based on our, our immunity is working day and night, every second, whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, whether you pay attention to it or not. Okay? 
but as a concept, our accepted format, according to the modern views, that is the defining um, point of um, the view, modern view of allergies. Okay? And what solutions the science offers? Assuming that it's false alarm, assuming that our immunity is not able to identify um, or misidentify um, the substances coming in. <coughs> so our response is considered, the immunity is considered as a wrong response, right? So basically you come up with everything and try. So you have antihistamines, corticosteroids, which are again anti, right? Mast cell, mast cell stabilizers, again, anti. Inhibition, leukotriene inhibitors, anti. Polynergic, anti -polynergics. anti, right? Deep congestion. You know, if the congestion is coming in, according to the you know, immune response, then you try to be congested. Right? You want more to go in. And immunomodulators, we discussed uh, in the last, uh, previous presentation on. And uh, the clear solution, acceptable, uh, no choice solution, epinephrine, not only. So you know, there's no question about it, there's no doubt about that. So these are the modern solutions. So different classes of you know, drugs were there, and these means and you, all, you probably all are aware of those things, don't need to go into details. But uh, all of them come with its own baggage of side effects, right? So most of them are like, Drowsiness is a common problem. When you take even a simple Benadryl, Dipen Hygiene, you know, you, you're pretty much close to a little more than taking a beer, right? So it's, it may not be considered as drunken driving, but uh, <laughs> based, depending on your body personality, you know, it's, it can get close to that, okay? So, corticosteroids, what's a good side effect of People who use corticosteroids. Uh, cushionoid syndrome. Cushion. You know, you become, you put on weight and uh, lose hair. You become more beautiful. Lemon right? on a magistrate appearance. <laughs> That's what we used to call it. Yeah. So it's totally tells you if you take these steroids. Right. For the longer period. Mm -hmm. Lemon on a magistrate. Even yeah. worse, um, research has shown that mothers who take corticosteroids yeah. during pregnancy, yeah. their children grow up to be violent. Yes. Yeah. 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 And how about the bone growth? Yeah, it's also linked to osteoporosis. Right. Like that's why the lemon on a matchstick, the, the legs and the bones. Yeah, it becomes a big Along with it's like a big lemon, big, big body, and a thin leg and arms. Yeah, like a stick. Because the bones have grown like the osteoporosis. Eggshell bones, I think. Yeah. So, you know, pretty much everybody is aware of it. Common mothers or, you know, professionals, everybody is aware of it. Because we, the steroids have become so common, which is commonly prescribed medication, so we know the symptoms, we know how it is affecting the children as well as um, adults. So the, the common thing is weight gain, which is not, which doesn't come into our, you know, how to control it. Right? And even after you withdraw the medicine, you still have those symptoms. And uh, I think the worst um, impact on the society, I, I feel, is on the children. Because, you know, pretty much every kid is on it, right? And their growth stands, their um, intellectual aspect get affected, and um, the irritability and, you know, the air of problems, everything kind of, you know, uh, becomes part of their life. And unfortunately, you know, it affects every uh, stage of their life, the rest of their life. And um, so, you know, pretty much, Side effect profile is um, pretty well known. So we'll go to the question is, is, is are we able to solve the problem overall? I mean, yes, we, we understand the types of allergies and other than um, an epileptic shock, um, are we really able to manage the problem? Well, are we come are we able to come in, come out of it? problem is a question. How many people agree that we, yes, we too are, we are able to 
for some extra years, but. <laughs> yeah, for acute, I mean, uh, you know, in anaphylactic shock yeah. or uh, acute status asthmaticus, that yeah. is our last resort. We, have, right. we, we know that you can't do right. anything uh, holistic at that situation. It's an emergency. Yeah. So they are definitely life saving uh, and they are important. The World Allergy Organization says, no, yes, we are managing, yes, but we really need the uh, health organizations and government needs to involve very seriously to consider this as a major global problem because we are not controlling this, we are not managing to the extent. Yes, um, there's misuse of steroids, which is in all societies, I think, because it's like having a clash and cough, they call it. Yeah. When nothing works, you use it and right. it works, right? So yeah. I think that's a huge problem. Right. It's in the hands of the wrong people. Right. So if you have tools and you use them wrong way, then they can be harmful. Yeah. So we are using the solutions and we are able to get some help, yes. And at the same time, we are gaining some other problems, yes. And um, so there is a lot to work on it. We still need to you know, find better ways to deal with it. That, that's what I would like to kind of uh, you know, come to more of a bottom-end conclusion. We're not negating this or you know, uh, promoting something. But I, ultimately, we want to reduce the problem. I mean, solve the problem at the same time, reduce the side of the profile. And at the same time, ability to manage the problem better with more, more adoptable, acceptable, simplified economic way. You know, that, that's the progress um, we need to think of. So here, as uh, I said before, is like, you know, I, on the question, you know, the, the understanding itself, like a lot of times what I feel, you know, with, while working with patients, you know, as a pharmacist, it's really a hard job, tough job, to be a face of the whole medical profession, you know, that's really what they can see. Pharmacist is the person who represents <laughs> The whole, whatever is happening with the medicine, whatever is happening with the doctor, whatever is happening with the, their condition, you know, pharmacist has to <laughs> face it and he is the responsible person to answer. Otherwise, they're, you know, they're ready to punch. <laughs> so, to understand, uh, I mean, to solve the problem, so, you know, to find a solution, we really have to understand the problem thoroughly. Without understanding the problem, you know, providing a solution, um, I don't know how that matches. So here I would like to kind of question in a common sense way, not necessarily professional, but you know, is the allergen, when you consider allergen, not toxic um, properly allergen, okay. Is the allergen really a problem? When we blame the pollen or when we blame anything which comes into the picture, you know, we rest, our body is responding to. Is the allergen really the problem? If it is a problem, then everybody should have right. So when some some when you stab someone with a knife, it doesn't matter who that is. Yeah. It hurts. Yeah. Then you can say knife is a problem, <laughs> right? But if, if if it hurts someone but it doesn't hurt nine other, then you can't say the knife is a problem, right? So you know to really fix that thought that allergen is a problem, you know, oh, pollen is a problem. So, you know, we kind of have to like rethink about it, okay? And the other side, when we talk about the immunity response, you know, like we said in or, you know, overreaction and all that. Is the actual immunity really the problem? I think uh, the Immunity can be a problem in some cases. Some cases, but referring to allergies. If we, if we narrow down to allergy, is, allergy. is immunity the problem? Yes, immunity is the problem. I think Not it's somewhere in between. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it can be, right? Allergen can be a problem. Immunity can be a problem. But we can't put a, a logo to that and blame it. In between. 
Yeah. So we need to be kind of in a balanced way. Allergen can be a problem when it crosses its line. Right? If allergen is all over around you and if it can go up to the nostril, is okay, not a problem. But what if it crosses the nostril and goes into the lungs? Right? Then I can say yes, allergen is a problem. Right? Okay. If the allergen goes in and immunity as well as not, because it crossed its line, right? Immunity response. So it's normal function. It's saying, you know, it crossed, the allergen crossed the line, came in, I need to reject, I need to kill this thing. It's a, it's a good response. Immunity response is fine. What if when you put this all anti stuff, antihistamines and cholinity or uh, steroids and everything, and you say, immunity, calm down, you, know, you don't need to work. Then, then after that, you say immunity is a problem. <laughs> because it finds a way out. The body, you know, the, the what, what immunity is really doing is helping us to sustain our life. Right? It doesn't matter what it is. Anything which is hurting our body, you know, it's, even mind is going to reject. That's its job. It's doing its job. But when you mess it up with so many things, it, it finds another. The same, one or other way it triggers, like you know, the mucus you know, the pumps in. So the lungs get loaded with mucus. And bacteria get trapped in them. And then you begin, the infection triggers in. So, you know, then you get fever. So all these things come in. If, you, if immunity was working fine, you know, if, it, if we understood it when the sneezing was happening and, you know, do it in more natural way or not anti-immunity work was done, then, it, you know, we could change in a certain way to make this more um, beneficial. Okay. So there is, don't, I don't want to blame the allergen to start with and at the same time I don't want to I'm, I'm not ready to accept immunity as a problem, but we need to find a way, find a middle path or integrated path to solve these problems. So here, you know, how do we know? I mean, how, how do, what do we do? What is the root cause analysis? What is the best way to approach to this? So we, we cannot avoid allergen, right? And we cannot avoid immunity response. These are not in our hands. Okay. But why it is happening? I mean, immunity is working fine and if it, allergen is not the actual culprit. And why it is happening? Because, see, anytime the rejection comes in, like, you know, let us say, oh, you know, I don't like it, is one kind of saying, you don't want it. And I hate it is another way of saying, I am allergic to this is another way of saying, right? So there is a kind of level of no, say no, and allergic reaction is an utter going crazy, right? So when something becomes over, more than what body can handle, because bacteria is everywhere, fungus is everywhere, allergens are everywhere, okay? as long as the body can handle it, there is a certain pace, the time, energy, and you know how much it can do at a certain level of speed. But when the reaction triggers when it's more than what it can handle. Okay, the capacity to handle is in Ayurvedic terminology is called dya right? So the immunity when chamat means forgiveness, right? So, so whenever there is something coming in, it's a constant work. So when the ability to forgive or ability to handle, ability to digest is the, is the capacity, what is capacity. So if that is, as she said earlier, like when it goes low, when it, is, when it goes down, then it is, it's difficult to manage the situation. But at the same time, I would like to know how we can improve, actually, how we can improve that. Increase the capacity of the addiction model. The main aspects um, why the immunity is low. 
is one solution we need to you know, find out. So for that generally it's you know we talk about Amaya and in the reference to allergies also it's a big play. Okay. Uh, would be talked about as a you know level crossing the line is nothing but you know when it reaches a certain point and it becomes toxic or a level of toxicity is you know the ama which is not digested properly. You know, it accumulates in the body and body cannot take it anymore, any further. Okay. And uh, Mandaki is a low army we talk about that also quite a bit. So I don't need to go into more details of, um, into that. But these are kind of the point, the view, the hybridic point of view or holistic view, integrated view is um, you need to look at the problem differently. Um, you need to work more on improving the immunity capacity and we need to work on AMA and we need to improve our digestive capacity and let things flow in our body so that they don't cause okay, um, reactions or rejection by the body. So how do we do that? How do we achieve that? The, the heading of the conference is home remedy, so we kind of won't go in that direction. So generally what I suggested um, in the practice and found good uh, responses or um, resolved a lot of uh, allergy issues is like very simple solutions. The first thing, you know, generally commonly I recommended is to avoid their cool drinks. Take the sodas, ice, uh, it doesn't matter what that is, anything cold in their life, you know, to take it out. Don't, you cannot solve this problem by drinking anything cold. Doesn't matter what it is. Okay. So that's one simple thing. And um, second thing is uh, nasya, like you know, any kind of not in a clinical nasya model, but generally you can put ghee or coconut oil or some kind of oil. Put in the nose in the night time, so you know that that should help to the prime why that worked well in our family is um, our nose gets dry. It doesn't matter where you are, in the office or a home or in the car, air conditioning is running. If you read the manual, operating manual of air conditioner, you will know. Drying is is, is a common thing. So the nose gets dry. And Allergen, when we talk about allergen, we talk about the allergen going, crossing the line, right? Why it crosses the nose and goes into lung? It's because of the function of the nose, the external part of the nose is to trap all, it doesn't matter, dust, pollen, whatever it is. Any powdery substance, and we inhale the moisture, the nostril, the, the surface, because of surface, traps those things. So any time that crosses that this area and goes in to track your lungs, what is the response comes in? So if we can take care of this, this area, the nostril surface, because of the that you solve like almost 90% of the problem, period. Okay. And that's why understanding the dry nose, dry track or you know this area is very important because you need to consider that as a very important aspect of basics of root cause analysis problem in allergies in, in my from my experience of you know, how we help the, the patients. Yeah. Um, so in the for the AMA and Mandarni and all that, you know, for dinner chari because seasonal allergies, right? And they say seasonal allergies, then you want to adopt seasonal treatments. So that is Ritu Charya. Ritu is the six seasons. Okay. And sometimes going for Panchakarma every six months or two, you know, for Ritu or for six months or once a year, that will help to prepare the body to um, take the enemy of allergens and all that to improve the immunity. Okay. And maintain the Nirama. So, Ama is a bad situation. So, 
the shloka says, Sarve Santu Niramaya. Right? So generally it is described as being deceased free, right? You know, there is no disease yet, but it's more of Nirama, that means without harm. Let everybody be without harm. Chikitsa part, I will not cover because I am not an Ayurveda doctor, so I will stay away from that. But you can always consult Ayurveda doctors to uh, give you uh, clinical uh, benefit of Ayurvedic side. Okay. But uh, yes, that can be done also. There are, there are formulations which are helpful. Okay. And from the yoga perspective, um, there are Kshatriyas. And out of that, you know the Nepi part, right? The last 15 years, I think, one became billionaire by selling only Nikki part. Okay, this was it worked, right? It's only a simple part to see, like, oh, what the hell is this? But you know, when people who used it, you know, then it's a simple water dripping through one side of the nose to the other side, and you know, that's all. But it, it kept the secret is it kept it cleaned the nostril, whatever the dust or you know accumulation you know got here, and it stimulated to instead of like, you know what we said in us, as a, we put the oil, right? Body has natural tendency to create fat. Anyway, so when we do the Jalaneti, you know, it stimulates the mucosal um, secretions. So that keeps on trapping the dust, so it doesn't um, let the particles go in. So and other Kshatriyas also, I mean, uh, Sutraneti and Vamana, uh, you know, they are also helpful. So these are the solutions. Any other, anybody else can think of um, solutions for allergies? How about uh, Okay. With turmeric and honey. Okay, that is to stimulate, that is to stimulate the immunity. For us, uh, generally, and in our home, it's commonly known as okay. If somebody starts sneezing or you know itchy eyes and all that, all right, time for black pepper, you know, or you know rasam, what you call in South India is rasam. So it's like Chinese herbal tea, right? So it's a thin solution, boil with coriander, um, you know, all these like what spices we talked about. We just put them in, make it boil. Uh, drink, you know, when they're warm. So yeah. that just relieves because it helps to um, uh, what do you call it? the juices, you know, the phlegm gets diluted, it can stimulate, it opens up the channels which are blocked, and it helps the immunity to do its job. Okay, so we work with the immunity, so we don't go anti. I've also uh, felt uh, using a humidifier. Yeah. Those very wintry months when it's dry and yes. that really helps, helps a lot. Yes. And menthol, yes. or Vivix Rekadam, yeah. you know, those are good. Yeah. Inhalation of that, right. the margaroves, yeah. all those things are amazing. Yeah. Vitamin C, natural form is Right, good. right. Right, yeah, absolutely. Great ideas. Um, and uh, some things to, uh, we want to watch to prevent. I mean, you know, what we can do at home to reduce our burden of allergies is if anybody still uses carpet, you want to rethink or look into it, start read something about what carpet does to your inside the home. Uh, it's especially if it is plastic based. And if you can add curtains to your list, I would really <laughs> <That's> <laughs> because I very, and also stuffed toys. Yeah. Which, uh, absolutely, in absolutely. My Pretty much anything made of synthetic fiber, okay, uh, it's uh, kind of critical uh, inside all, especially because it's, it's a closed environment, you know, it, everything gets trapped, and you can see your uh, uh, air conditioner filter or any filters you look at, how does so much of dust come into the house without, you know, leaving anything open, because we generally assume dust comes from outside, but actually so much gets accumulated inside the house, and primary, you know, factories like in the carpet or you know 
curtains on and stuff that and those things like that. And air conditioner is good to have air conditioner. Yes, you cannot avoid it, right? But you have to understand the side effects of that also. Um, humidifier, as you said. Yeah, humidifier, yes. Humidifier has said, but I also want to stress on the use of a deep humidifier in the hot and humid yeah. months. Yeah. Because like you talked about the mold issue, yes. we all have basements, you know. Right. So I think using that dehumidifier definitely, and I have one in my basement, and when I remove that water can from it, yeah. every few hours, it's fascinating. It's full of water. Right. It's so much water. Exactly. So, you know, I mean, they are definitely helpful to maintain the temperature and all that. Um, but they do, for anything, you know, we have to understand the, the side effects also, and we have to be watchful about it. Because even using humidifier, putting on the air conditioner, you are actually neutralizing the effect of humidifier. Because it doesn't take much more. The, the humidifier put the humidity, right? Air conditioner just does it. I mean, it's only a matter of a few minutes. So you're back to zero idea. So you know, if if your air conditioner is on, then you know um, you want to limit the humidifier effect to certain area that way. Humidifier is not going to be used in the summer months. Humidifier is used in those winter months when the dryness is so much. So October, November, December, the humidifier is there. There's no air conditioning. That's what my concern. Great, right, right. I, I got yours. I'm, I'm referring to general situation. Yeah, but I worked in pediatrics, and yeah. this was our protocol. We always. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Definitely helpful, useful. Uh, I'm looking at more way we are paid. Yeah. So I'm trying to kind of you know find sure. uh, make the point of you know where we are missing. Okay. So cleaners, a lot of. Uh, as we use so many cleaners for the house and for toilets and for the kitchen. You know, there are so many chemicals involved. So those are some other triggers. Um, long term, they can affect you. And uh, perfumes, uh, deodorants. Not that there is so much of so many natural things available. You know, lemongrass oil or red pepper oil, um, lemon peel oil. There is so, I mean, like you look like thousands of natural perfume. Products available, but uh, unfortunately, you know the patented products and commercial products come with. They use natural ones also, but at the same time, they come with so many powerful chemicals in them. It, it's uh, sometimes, you know, not everybody probably can handle the, you know, foreignness of the material. So you know, if we can keep naturalness as much as possible, you know, we can avoid um, uh, unnecessary reactions. And um, or thermal teas are you know, good way to incorporate. Uh, I'm sure you know, our um, fraternity are, are comfortable, but uh, they, they are already known. But general community, we need to educate to uh, use as much as possible hot herbal teas. And um, sometimes soups, you know, we can include, especially the teenagers or kids, you know, if they don't like the, the, what you want to give them, you know, the soups is a way to kind of introduced to them. So you know, it's more adoptable, more acceptable as a solution. You know, if you say like, oh, take this, this is good, you know, then the first thing is, oh, you know, mom is mom, came with, you know, something. So instead, you know, it's a nice way to um, integrate into you know, soup model, um, the therapeutic benefits of, you know, the herbs. And uh, processed foods, we talked about it quite a bit. So the less you know, we use the less, you know, we will have a problem, we can um, solve the problem, you know, which is. And refrigerator, I mean, make a habit to people to look at the fridge frequently. Uh, make a uh, uh, practice as like every two weeks or every, at least once a month or something like that to see what is in it. Because there's a lot of times, you know, I find any, any home I generally go to you know, consult. Uh, you will find all kinds of stuff in it. And um, it can affect the healthy stuff. You know? I mean, sometimes whatever you have unclean, you know, it can affect the uh, stuff which you have so called healthy, organic, and all that. You know? They get all spoiled. And you know, it can create a reaction um, case. Okay? So that's pretty much it. Okay. Thank you.
question. In my experience with the allergy patients, uh, there is always an emotional component uh, to allergies. Uh, in modern medicine, we think emotions cause lowered immunity. In Ayurveda, we know that emotions will lower your acne and then uh, cause uh, your odors will be less and then you will have more opportunity to make allergic uh, reactions. So what is your uh, thoughts on Absolutely. Um, uh, I think I partly mentioned that point, but uh, did not go into details. But uh, yeah, it's a purging uh, emotional loss uh, cause, you know, the rejection, um, the, the feeling of rejectedness. Everything affects um, because it's like a, it's a body mind relationship, of course, and the emotional has definitely affects the response. Uh, it's a very good point to know when there. It, uh, it, indirectly also the breathing. You know, the emotional is effect, it's affecting the breathing. So when the breathing is not happening properly, there is no, not enough prana, and not enough muscular, neuromuscular responses. And it's, a, it's like a, a complex thing, but you know, it affects, it reflects in the child's uh, health and uh, response. Yeah. Thank you. Stress, you know, we talked about stress yesterday. Mind clutter. Mind clutter. Stress, yeah. That was interesting. Yeah. So, but we report as Dharik Shamatwa, another Burgundian, because uh, definitely is a big factor. Yeah. Any, anything else? Okay. Any others? Thank you. Thank you. Your last slide is beautiful. Yes, I'm going to send this to you. Yeah. So, the chief, is she 